Hey everybody, welcome back to my Eurovision React Review channel. So I've literally just got back in from work. Yes, if you're a subscriber, I had to go back to work today after my seven day quarantine. I don't know if I'm born for work. Nah, I'm only joking. Um, it was great. <laughs> uh, so operation try and kind of multitask just did not go down well today. Yeah. I wasn't going to do these vlogs, um, but one or two of you have been really, really sweet and you've just been like, yeah, just continue doing what you do. It's going to be limited. I'm not going to lie to you. So what did I catch up with today? Armenia. Which songs was I able to take time out of what I was doing? Like small opportunities. Armenia, Finland, Israel. Shane, you saw more than that. Serbia and um, San Marino. I've got little stories about each of those in regards to how I got to watch them as well. So um, I missed the first two. I, I missed Norway. I was gutted for that. Like I've, I'm going to have to speak in code, just obviously for professional integrity. Um, but it just wasn't possible based on what I was doing at the time. I just couldn't watch it. But I managed to watch Armenia. So it got to a moment where I took a break <laughs> and someone was like, who? <laughs> is in my work establishment. Can I just speak to you for 10 minutes of your break? I was like, you can speak to me for 10 minutes, but I'm not gonna lie to you. I need to watch this. And so they're sitting there like trying to speak to me. And I'm like, just, just, are there, there are breaks, but this person's gonna sing three times. Just like, just wait, just wait between the breaks. And me and you, we can chat until your heart's content. <laughs> and they're like, okay. Right, loved it. Like I'm, and I, I've got to also realise that I'm sure with some people who kind of watch these um, rehearsals, there is elements of bias and vested interest. Like I am Team Armenia this year. Like I listen to Snap all of the time. Um, she starts off the, with the guitar. I mean, it's it's obviously you've probably worked this out right now. I know, I, I haven't seen any of the snippets today, so I don't know what you've seen. Um, but it's it, it is all based in this room. Um, a bedroom which seems she's sitting on the bed and she's playing the guitar um, and I actually quite like there's obviously it's purposeful there's there is a, obviously a wind machine so it's moving these kind of po they're not post-it notes they're bits of fabric um, I've seen lots of things on Twitter about kind of how it looks really bad it doesn't actually look that bad I actually think it's quite looks very very good um, and then and then she gets off the bed. Like there's so many small parts of this staging that just keeps you watching for three minutes. And I haven't seen some for today, so I don't know how that went down, but I've got a pretty good idea of if it's not gonna be too dissimilar, I can't imagine from what we saw for Melody Grand Prix. And that's not to diss that, that's me just basically saying that's gonna be great in itself anyway. I think this is a perfect song to come after this. It calms you down, but the staging, I think, is so tasteful and there are so many different elements of the staging that takes you through the three minutes because it is a nice melody, so you're going with the melody, but you've got a really good staging that keeps you going. So then she gets off the bed and then she rips off parts of the wall to, re to reveal lyrics that she's singing. So the la I've written them down. The last one, June the 22nd. It's quite interesting, actually, because um, today, I think there was press people... Um, online that I hadn't seen before. Um, I hadn't, if people might be tuning into this video for the first time actually, um, I have an online press pass, so <laughs> yeah. Um, and so there were people that I hadn't seen before and they were asking lots of questions, which not hasn't happened before, um, about like the songs and the artists, like someone said today, so what's the, the background behind Marius Bear's second name? I'm like, well, I don't know if this is the right place to be asking these questions. But someone was saying, what's the relevance of June the 22nd? That's the date that she wrote the song, but I think someone said she said it in her meet and greet today. Um, and then, um, yeah, so there's different parts of the lyrics, which is um, which is revealed, which I quite liked. And then we get this amazing moment where um, she rips off one part of the wall, it's circular. And I was a bit confused because I'm going to Turin. And so basically, the, obviously the stadium's here, the room is here. And I thought, well, hold on a minute, for the first two minutes, is all the audience gonna see is the back because 
yeah, when they zoom out, she's then looking out at the audience through this circle, for a circle through the wall. But no, the stadium, uh, the, the the room, I've seen it now, it, it moves. It's on a kind of rotation. So it does, so the audience will see the room and then the room rotates. And that's obviously when she goes boom. And then she's revealed to the audience in this circle and lights beaming out of it. Uh, so it goes from pink to kind of then black and yellow. Super, super effective. Like, I get why this is last. This is very technical. Um, and I do think it's a perfect song to come after Norway. And there's this smoke effect on the floor at the end as well. Um, I loved it. Obviously, trying to speak to someone who I made it very clear was only allowed to speak to me during the songs. And it was quite sweet. I was in a room. I've, I've just got to be a bit careful, haven't I? Because I actually haven't read the small print. I don't know what I'm allowed to... Like, obviously, it says do not record. No, like, no one is going to record what I'm looking at. Also, I don't think people really care what I'm looking at either in my employment. But I was like trying to move my laptop like away. I'm, like, I'm not sure if you're allowed to look at this. Um, but someone in the room was like, oh, what is that song? Like, it's really good. And they had their phone out to be like, for me to tell them what the song is. And I was like, oh, yeah, I think I can tell you that. Yeah, it's Armenia Snap. And they're like, oh. And then they downloaded it on their phone or whatever device they listen to music. Because um, I'd listened to it three times in this room. <laughs> um, loved it. Again, um, again, I think... All I want to say is everything is the same shade of pink. What she's wearing, the guitar, the um, obviously the walls, the bed, the lampshade. I just didn't know if it was a bit too monotonous, the colour scheme. Like, it was all... I, I don't know. I don't know what other people have said. I haven't seen any other kind of commentaries from other people who are in the, the stadium or who has an online press pass like me. I just thought, what? Surely shake something up. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I just, I do think for the two is everything is the same colour. Everything is the same shade of pink. Um, and it all blends in. And I just, I don't know. Um, but anyway, loved that. And those that don't think it's going to qualify, it's, I think it's going to qualify. So, professionalism, how did I do after that? <laughs> Oh, fine. Yeah, I had like, um, I was able to kind of take myself away and do some work whilst also engaging with, like, every time, it, like, I was able to find an opportunity to see these songs, I just grab bits of paper. Like, like there's one point where I was like, just give me that bit of paper. Um, so none of this actually is ordered. Um, that's Israel. That's Armenia. Um... She's in pink. Well, that's obviously not Finland. Um, okay. I must have Finland. No, here it is. He holds a blue. Yes, I have Finland. <laughs> okay, disclaimer. I, again, I don't know what other people have said about this act. Because um, I know, like, as a, I, I mean, I'm a huge, huge Eurovision fan, as you know. And I remember years gone by where, like, I would be on YouTube checking everyone's opinion of these songs. So I don't know what other people have said. I've literally just got in from work. Um, all I'll say is the Rasmus was coming into this with a disadvantage because it is the Rasmus. And I think as a result of that, I think everyone is probably going to be overcritical of what they see because they're expecting something more and are expecting the Rasmus to deliver something more because of the gravitas of who they are coming in. And even me seeing them, like, come on then, Rasmus, like, what, what are you gonna deliver? Um, so let me tell you a few things that I saw. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna say all this in the knowledge that, like, if, if this was a band from, I don't know, um, Montenegro doing this song, doing this staging, I probably would be saying things different. I, I'd probably be like, go that band, they, you know, very creative, they've done the best they can, blah, 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 blah. So I'm, I do know that before I say this. 
Um, he starts off holding a balloon and all I can think of is the ear. <laughs> Stephen King's ear. It's not like he looks like that. Of course he's not a clown, but he's just holding this balloon. And one of the takes today, like, because obviously there is wind in the, the stadium, you can't control the balloon. And there's a moment where the balloon kind of is doing this. It's really distracting. But he lets go of the balloon and then obviously you pan onto the stage with all of these massive balloons. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Um, those balloons, like, initially on sight, you're like, oh, and then you just lose interest in the balloons. Um, there's a moment where the guitarist decides he wants to walk around stage, and whether he's consciously doing it or not, but he's knocking these big balloons with his guitar, and it's really distracting. Like, as Laurie's singing, all I can notice is these balloons moving. <laughs> I don't know if that's intentional, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't look good. Yeah, guitarist runs through them. Movement is distracting, is what I've written. Um, the colour scheme works, I've said that because of the, um, you don't even notice the, the back, the balloons are so big, it's actually quite clever, so I don't think they ever worried that that thing was, wasn't going to be working in the background. Um, there's no LED images at all. They are solely relying on these balloons, that is the imagery. Um, which after the music video and after um, UMK where you actually had Im like cartoon images of Jezebel didn't you I kind of thought that they would bring that but I, maybe they were originally going to do that and then change their minds because of the the, the news that the, 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 the sun thing wasn't going to be working I don't know um, I mean that's all I'm going to really say I'm going to be honest with you Maybe the it thing is because he is wearing the raincoat and that makes me think of the child at the beginning of that film. I don't know, I was just watching him on this balloon. I'm like, oh, it's giving me flashbacks of it. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I don't want to say anything more. I've put black and yellow works, no LED images at all. Um, that's what I was going to say. I didn't make a note of it, but I didn't make a note of it of anything that should be worthy of saying. The final... Jezebel. There's a backing recording of all, an, like an audience um, recording of Jez, like as in, imagine a stadium saying Jezebel in unison. They've got that. Now, I hadn't, I, I mean, I clocked it because you do, your, your ears pop in like, oh, that doesn't sound like the, the studio version that I listened to. And then when I came out of the kind of live recording and was looking at the comments of the press, someone said, that's cheating. Because it's going to sound like it's people in the stadium saying, Jezebel. And then there was this whole debate. <laughs> I was like, oh, relax. <laughs> and like a lot of people are like, who cares? It's TV, it's entertainment. Like, if it makes the show better, then it makes the show better. And I get that. But then I did sit there being like, was that intentional for people at home to think that the people in the stadium are loving it so much that in the last Jezebel, it sounds like people in the stadium are saying that. Yeah, I do think it's that a bit cheeky. Um, anyway, I don't really care. Um, I, my only doubt, and again, I don't know whether it's coming from this place of the Erasmus, like, and I'm wanting kind of something more I know what I'm saying and it's probably coming from a place of actually expecting more because it's the Rasmus. Um, I don't know if it's the opener that I think the, the producers thought it was going to be. I don't think it's going to be that kind of wow, like the show has started. Because after all three takes, I didn't think wow. Um, those balloons. <laughs> oh, I will say they must be changing camera angles between the three things, unless I switched off, because the first run through of the Rasmus, um, there is someone on stage with one of those cameras following Laurie around, and there are moments where you just see a balloon. <laughs> like, and you can see Laurie's face like, like half there, and you can just see this massive balloon. Um, but I didn't notice as much in the second and third take. It seems that actually, that I think it's probably the, the, the guy, yeah, like the guy's walking around trying to follow him. He obviously got it, done it better the second or third time because the first time I was like, that's just a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. So that's my notes for that. Apologies if I'm not saying anything new. Um, 
And like I said, like these are just crappy bits of paper that I'm just like quickly writing stuff down. So I managed to watch that one on my own. I managed to watch Israel on my own. Um, so I didn't have any distractions during Israel. Um, opening note all three times. You just automatically, you can't not just automatically write the thing and now go. And this is where I've got this thing about whether the right song is starting. Um, Cause I don't know whether Israel would have been a better starter. Um, opening note, automatic. Those mirrors that I alluded to, what we kind of saw in the snippet, um, they are literally just at the beginning and that's it. So he says, he does the high note, and then it, when it gets to the did, 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 the mirrors go, and then that's it. That's all you see from the mirrors. Um, and then this, this whole three minutes is reliant on LED flooring. The whole three minutes. Um, and then from that, there's this LED kind of white walkway. Um, and then, yeah, it goes, the color scheme, it goes from white and black and then white, black and red. Um, it worked, I quite liked it. Um, <sighs> the dancing is slick. I, I expect that from Israel now. Um, and like Michael gives choreo and you wouldn't know he's given choreo because it's, it sounds like the studio version the whole time he sings. He sang that th three times giving full on choreo and his vocals are on point. So he must have been doing some crazy choreo to kind of allow him to do that. Um, it's really effective. The whole thing relies on the dancers and their engagement with the shaped blocks in the LED flooring. There were just one or two moments, that there are two things that I'll say that are slightly critical of this. There was one or two moments where, because it got, it didn't get boring, no, that's not the right word, but there were moments where I thought it was like almost like a game, like the dancers had to stay within the shapes. <laughs> um, and also, because they're engaging with the flooring, you st with the pan outs, like it's it's very kind of um square based when it pans out the rest of the flooring is black so it then opens up the stage and the staging starts looking a bit bare that's my only thing because they're very much center of the stage and it's fantastic the, the led um flooring is fantastic and the dances and the choreography is fantastic and the engagement with what they're doing with the with the blocks on the floor is fantastic I think it just needs closer camera angles because yeah, when it pans out, you then just see them in the middle and it's just very black around. So that was the only thing I, I noticed. Um, but yeah, the, uh, now, uh, I, 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 I loved it. Um, I like this song anyway. I know a lot of people don't like this song, um, but I love this song and I thought he, just completely proved why he won X Factor in like he's got a fantastic voice and live I just couldn't get over like he's really going for it at the end and just vocally it's just like you wouldn't even know um I really like the ethnic dance break um they do this really clever thing where they pan into each dancer like with each in quick succession and each dancer does it looks really 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 effective and really really good um have I written anything else here? I just put, yeah, I put twice. I like the ethnic dance break. Um, game must stay in the box, yeah. Um, yeah, so basically they've got the I am. So when I say to you about the LED flooring, now and again, I think every kind of 40 seconds, you get these square block turns of I dash M. It looks really, really, really good. Um, I, other than kind of like tightening the camera angles into the center of the stage and less pan outs, I don't think any Israel can do anything more. I actually thought it was really good. They, they've got the concept. The concept is slick choreography, engagement with the LED flooring. And so obviously as a result of that, there's a lot of camera angles from above, which is really good. Just don't pan out because the rest of the stage is really black. Well, that's all I have to say for that one, but I really enjoyed it. So that was Israel. So where am I now? <laughs> Serbia. <laughs> this is where, like, I was with quite a lot of people and I was like, it's Serbia. Like, I haven't written notes to this, I'm just to do it from memory. But basically, I just had to say to people, guys, this is gonna happen. I'm gonna watch something and you're just gonna have to deal with it. 
And they were like, okay. Um, and so the first run through it, and I was just glued. And because they knew I really, really liked Eurovision. There was one or two people like whispering like, look, he won't take his eyes away from the screen. <laughs> and I was like, you don't understand. Like, this is a really, really good song. It could potentially win. And I remember on the first run through, um, people in the room were like, do you like this song? I was like, yeah. <laughs> and actually, for, uh, when it got to the third time, I kid you not, in this room, there were a lot of people. Like I said, I'm speaking in code. I'm not telling you about my employment. Um, by the third run through, they were literally clapping through their beard and drama. Beard drama. Um, and I was like, this is interesting because a lot of the, a lot of the room... <laughs> didn't love the song first time round, but when it got to the third time round, really liked it. And I said this about the positives of having semi-finals to finals, you build momentum. And Constructor did in Serbia. No one was really talking about it before the semi-final, after the semi-final. I was in Serbia at the time, everyone was talking about it. And I just think, if it was semi-final one on the Tuesday, Shane, is it semi-final one? No, it's semi-final two. I think had it been semi-final one, that's a few days to get momentum because I know but by what I've seen today in regards to the staging and seeing people's response to the song, it's that sort of thing where people sit there being like, huh? And then it almost does become a meme and you do send it on to people. And I do think that that would have built from that Tuesday to that Saturday. But it's the Thursday. I'm still not, I'm still not saying that that's not going to happen because like I said, I... I just think, had it been the Tuesday, it would have given a lot of time for momentum to build with this song because it happened in Serbia. Um, because like I said, on the third run of a room of skeptics, them clapping, it was quite interesting. Um, again, I, don't, like, I, di I didn't actively say, look at this guys, because I don't think I'm allowed to do that. But I did say it, is, it was a room full of Italians. And so basically, um, between the first and second take, I just um, silenced it. And I said, OK, Italians, well, you need to go to social media and defend your country because everyone's saying that your country is rubbish because of this gaping sun thing. And they were like, oh, our country is amazing. I was like, well, <laughs> go to social media and defend it then. And um, it was quite interesting because the second time... I'm not going to say I actively told people to watch it, but they all said, but it's working. And I was like, what do you mean it's working? There were reservations after that first rehearsal clip that that sun not working disadvantages Serbia. I was in a room of people today who, who said that no, it's working because there's not many pan outs. It is very much her and her dances. And when you look in the background, because obviously between the, the, the sun things, there is gap and there is LED screen behind it and it's blue and it actually looks purposeful. It looks black, blue, black, blue, and it actually looks deliberate and it really doesn't look like something has malfunctioned on stage. Serbia has done something in its camera angles to make it look like it's part of what they intended. Um, Bravo, because I think a lot of people thought that Serbia was one of the countries disadvantaged by the sun that's not working. No, not the case. Not with the camera angles and not what I saw today. Um, I mean, I would love to say loads of stuff about this, but I watch the national final. It is it is a, a carbon copy of that, uh, which I'm so, so relieved about because that's what this song needed. I'm assuming, remember I said to you and I've said to you, what I'm seeing is what we will see in regards to the camera angles and what will be projected or what will be transmitted at home. We had translations. So not throughout the whole thing, there were certain parts of the song where translations came up on screen, which makes me think that is gonna happen in the semi-final and final that whether you like it or not, you will have a translation of certain parts of the song, which answers the question, how is she going to transmit the message of this song if she keeps it in Serbian? They've put compulsory subtitles. You have no choice. It's going to come up. It's in English. So I don't know. I'm Yeah, everyone's getting the same transmission. So if you don't know Serbian and you don't know English, yeah, you're screwed. <laughs> but there are English subtitles that come up intermittently at key parts of the song, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, 
I don't know, maybe other people have said that that's going to go, but I'm assuming that that's, we're going to have that, that's going to be transmitted at home, uh, which is good. The last thing I'll say is, like I said, I didn't purposely say, watch this, guys, but obviously I'm in a room, in a workplace, momentarily looking at my laptop. I did say to certain people, like, if you leave here, do not go around and say, like, I've seen Serbia's, like, rehearsals. And I, like, joked. I was like, and if someone says to you, what will you tell them if someone asked you, did you watch Serbia's rehearsal? And it was almost like they'd rehearsed it. Five of them were like, we won't say anything. We'll just do this. <laughs> and initially I was like, well, don't do that. But then I was like, oh, no. Everyone knows that movement. Yeah, fine. Just do that. That's fine. Um, I thought that was quite funny. Um, and then... There was a big, I, I was in lots of meetings and stuff. I couldn't watch anything else, but I made it my absolute mission to watch San Marino. So I was in a meeting um, and I was just like, I need to go, <laughs> I need to go. And so I rushed, found a room. Someone was in that room and they were trying to speak to me. I was like, Shh. I was like, right, I'm gonna watch this. Watch it if you want and just don't ask me any questions. Um, and did I write notes? Oh yeah, I have got notes. Um, another piece of paper that I happen to have on that desk that I managed to find. Um, first thing I've put here is it looks expensive. Um, I don't know what record label. Um, I asked an Italian today, I was like, how do you say it? I say Achille and they're like, Achille, Achille, Achille. They said it, I'm saying it wrong. Um, he's obviously part of a big record. There's money behind this. It just looks very expensive. Um, smoke on the floor, which I loved. I just put, you're never bored. Like, this isn't a song that I listened to, but I wanted to watch the second and the third rehearsal. Like, I couldn't wait. Like, you're just never bored. Um, there's this, because it's so clever, whoever's produced this is a genius because you're not allowed to, even if you don't like rock and you don't like this song, like, you, you just, there's so many different elements to the staging and his movement and where he goes and what he does in the different places that you're just like, and then at moments to give us a break from watching him, they then pan to the drummer in the, in the, in the thing and then someone else in the, the cage, sorry. <coughs> Honestly, it's a three minute feast for the eyes. Pyro loved, smoked, loved, camera angles loved. Um, <clears throat> again, someone's on stage with a camera following his movements. Um, I've put underlined, 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 which makes me think I must have loved that. There's this amazing moment where um, he's there with the guitarist um, and it's a good 20 seconds and it is quite intimate, a male guitarist. And and then it, and then it, oh, it's just amazing. Like, and at the end, it's a silhouette of him and the guitarist. It's black and with red in the background. I, honestly, Molly has got into this. Um, the guitar solo is amazing. So obviously to give a chile, a chile, time to go over near the ball, the guitarist does his guitar solo at the front. And at this point, there is fantastic lighting. There's pyros, the water's there. It all just seamlessly comes together. Um, oh yeah, and then he's... He's at the background just vamping during that, actually, like going, ooh, ah, and it doesn't, it, and that makes it sound awful. It doesn't sound awful, it's really effective. Um, image with birds, but I don't know what I've written there. Um, I loved it. Like, I actually think this is probably gonna qualify. I think people are gonna watch it. I think days gone by, people are like San Marino, but I think producers are gonna, uh, the, the, the commentators are gonna introduce this, as in like, this isn't just like, this, um, Valentina Minetta. You know, this is a, an act here. Like, I said, like, I've floated his name in certain circles. I'm like, is he huge? And people are like, it's not huge, but we do know him. But I said today, um, with colleagues, I was like, oh, well, you know, San Marino, um, it's a Chile. And they're like, what? And then I showed them the first rehearsal and they're like, oh my God, and even one or two people. No, actually everyone knew who it was. He is pretty big here. Um, I I think this is going through guys. Like, look at me. Like, I where does this rank in my top 40, 35? And I think out of all of them, this is the one where I think if I watch this back, I'm like, you really lit up when you talked about that song, Shane. Glad I caught it, but like I said, it was not borderline unprofessional, but like, I was like, I need to go. 
<laughs> I was like, I, I like I've missed so much today. I'm definitely I need to watch that. So that was a day of me trying to do a full time job, trying to keep my job, um, and try and find small moments during the day to see if I could catch up with things. Yeah, crazy, right? Um, so that's what I'm going to do each day. So it, it's going to be Russian roulette, guys. <laughs> Tomorrow it'll be like, I saw one song. <laughs> but the day after, it might be like, I saw all of them. So it's Russian roulette, what I've seen. But that's what I've seen today. So if you're still here at the end of the video and you haven't subscribed, I don't know what value subscribing is going to be now. You're like, well, everyone else talks about every song, Shane. But today you talked about do. Um, if you want to hear me about, talk about just do songs, then do that. Um, and yeah, until next time, stay safe.